stop buying it. You people here, you're in the driveway. I'm directing you now to move out of the driveway. No problem. Right. Hopefully that too means that they actually approve of what we're doing out here and are hearing the message. Thirty in the morning, we're meeting out in front of a KFC for a debriefing for the slaughterhouse disruption activity that's taking place today here in Brisbane. We're here at the slaughterhouse, the abattoir. It is a dairy slaughterhouse, but I think they also have some goats in there. There are some activists that are inside the slaughterhouse. They've been live streaming footage onto Facebook all morning, and the police have just arrived. We've got about 60 activists here today holding up signs and protesting, just letting the general public know about what is happening behind closed doors. This has to be exposed in order for it to be stopped. So a slaughterhouse worker just drove by in his car and uh, yelled out to the group to get a job and made some animal noises at us. And that's the thing, you're going to be mocked when you're delivering a message that really makes people confront what they're doing for a living, what they're doing every single day, what they're putting in their mouth. So we have to expect this resistance, but that's okay because the resistance is going to come before the mass change is. So we have to be prepared for that. So you can see the activists are in there. They entered the slaughterhouse very early this morning. I'm not sure if the police are trying to get them out or if they're allowed to stay a little longer. seeing is the reality of dairy farming in Australia. These are bobby calves, these are babies. 700,000 baby cows, baby males, bobby calves are killed in Australia every single year. In Australia it is legal to kill male bobby calves by a blunt force to the head and yet if the same thing would have been done to dogs, you'd be locked up in jail. So how can we have one law for one species and a completely different law for another species when in actual fact, they both have equal ability to suffer and to feel pain? It's just crazy. And again, the responsibility has to come down to the consumers because this is only happening because people are buying it. What do you hear, by the way? What do you What do you hear? Tell us. I can't say I can hear anything, any animals in serious distress. So I'm not going to say I hear any animals that are screaming or in pain. Mm -hmm. But I just hear animals that are locked up um, overnight that are, would be normally upset about them now away from home. Yeah. So does that make that bad. Does that make you think at all about consuming dairy? Pardon? Does that make you think about consuming dairy? I've been. No, I know the farming industry. Mm. Um, there's good and bad. Mm -hmm. There's always the bad eggs. Mm. There's always the good ones. What's so. the good ones, do you think? Well, I think that there's a lot of dairy farming that that 
runs humanely. Mm -hmm. um, How do you do that, that, do you think? How do you run a, a dairy farm humanely? Well, with any animals, I think that there's an aspect of it that's not fair, but that's, that's nature. Things, things die in nature, like an animal will kill another animal to survive, and we are yeah. omnivores after all, one way or another. Do you think if we have alternatives that are healthy and don't have to hurt the animals, that maybe we should choose those instead of dairy? Well, possibly, do you think that's an option? Yeah, possibly, but we're answering, we're answering something that's, that's a natural part of life as well. Do you think it's natural for human adults to drink breast milk of another species? You, that's mm, kind of designed for babies. I don't really drink milk myself. Mm, that's good. But um, I think we, as a race, need to consider what we do as far as eating, because we're such a mess, mm. Mm. and um, we do need alter alternatives. Yeah. But what damage do those alternatives do? Do you think they do as much damage as what's going on we behind the slaughterhouse? Yet. Well, we don't know yet. Do you, What's next? That's all I can say. Yeah. Do you Sometimes, think that um, soybeans and almonds scream like that? We well, don't know what that damage can be done in a mess. In mess. Right. If anything in mass can be destructive. So we should be careful of plant milks? We should be careful of a lot of things we do. Mm. But, anyway, that's all I have to say. Thanks for Bye. dropping by. Yeah, I'm Che from Animal Liberation Queensland. So we've got 50, 50 plus people outside and 24 people inside basically in response to the footage that Animal Liberation Queensland and Aussie Farms released last week. The footage we obtained shows a calf that appears not to be properly stunned, that was stomped and kicked brutally by one of the workers, suffering in its final moments before having its throat slit. We want people to, we want that worker fired and I believe that's what the um, people that are chained inside the slaughterhouse there are demanding. Um, but more importantly, we want people to realise that this is dairy cruelty. This is what happens in the dairy industry. Most of this is standard practice. The calves get separated from the mother at birth, taken away and end up in um, places like this. So we're now showing the footage of the taken here at the abattoir of the calf being slaughtered and kicked and stomped by one of the workers. Um, we're showing that footage to the manager and the police. What did they say? Okay, they didn't seem to see an issue with that because they said that the calf was already dead. But the calf was, clearly wasn't dead. Um, they just seemed more interested in finding out who put the cameras in there. That's mainly what they care about. Like, if you can't see something wrong with that picture, even if he wasn't stomping on the calf, there's still something wrong with that picture. Crazy to think that we live in a world that it was of more concern where the cameras were planted and how they were planted than what was actually happening to that poor, innocent, defenceless baby. <laughs> Hey, come up. Oh, mate, you're a legend, aren't you? Watch those guys. Watch the rock. Ah, bloody s. <laughs> that dog. That was funny ass. Watch out for the rock. And that's the kind of violent opposition that we're talking about. The fact that this kind of peaceful protest stirs that kind of emotion and anger is absolutely extraordinary. Think about that guy almost taking out activists, could have caused an accident, could have killed himself turning in front of a truck. Police standing right here, but that seems okay. But what goes on behind those doors, what's happening to those babies, that's legal. Think about that. To find out what goes on in the dairy industry and to not do anything is... It's like I'm, I, I know now what happened, so uh, I need to I need to stand up for these voiceless victims who who don't, yeah who don't have a voice who are being tortured as we speak. You know, you have a moral obligation to do yeah, something once you know the truth, yeah. don't you? Definitely. Yeah. And it's activists like the vegan couples who inspire me to um, do more and be a better person and make this change, have, make this paradigm shift. If you're finding what's happening today distressing and you're also still participating in it by spending your dollar on dairy products, you can just switch them to uh, plant-based alternatives. There are so many on the market these days. Just check out your local supermarket. There's bound to be some almond milk, rice milk, oat milk, coconut milk, hemp milk. The list goes on. You know, and this is the idyllic picture of free-range cows. They're out in the field, in the sunshine. You know, it looks good, but the reality is... They all end up in here having their throats slit. It's not the conditions and it's not the treatment, it's the use and the exploitation, full stop. Police car number five, I think.
You people here, you're in the driveway. I'm directing you now to move out of the driveway. No problem. So right out of the road. Sure. Obviously not wanting us to hear the conversation. You, 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 yeah. you, 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 back. Anybody with a camera, I guess. So this is great news. We've got Channel 7 mainstream media turning up. This is exactly what we wanted. Mainstream TV filming this message here. Nothing humane happens in a slaughterhouse. That's what you want on your mainstream television. This message right here. 24 animal activists secured themselves to gates within the High Chester Meats Abattoir near Bow Desert. They were responding to covert footage they say was sent to them. We have blurred that vision, but it shows a calf that's supposed to be dead being kicked and stomped by a worker while its limbs are moving. I'm well aware the calf had been bolt gunned in the head, but how do they know um, how conscious the calf still is if the legs are still kicking? Oh no! Babies heading off to slaughter their pigs. More police arriving, not for the pigs though being slaughtered, arriving for us, the activists trying to protect the innocent lives about to be taken. Business goes on as usual until we the consumers stop buying it. From the slaughterhouse down the road to the butcher. What was it like in there? Soul destroying. Loud. Incredibly distressing. The cows are starving from the emaciated. They want to eat and drink constantly. If you touch them, they want to suck your fingers, bite your clothes, their guts, and you can see all their ribs, their stomach is concave. Um, there were tiny pigs, only this big. We have filmed that piglets. Uh, female pigs just being raped by the males, not separated off. Four males, uh, one female. There are babies in there and people need to be aware of what happens to these animals. The young babies, the mass babies, but each and every one of us as the consumers, it stops with us. <laughs>